Hi everybody, Alex Deploy here from Expert Forex and welcome to today's webinar. As always, if you do have any questions, comments or remarks, uh, please send them through using the chat facility and I'll do my best to address them in the course of the webinar. The webinar started at quite an interesting time. I see there's uh, quite an explosion in the uh, in the pound, uh, it is, uh, the pound's weakened quite strongly, and we'll go and have a look at that and uh, where I've picked this up. There are two places where, where I've picked the, the, the pound thing up, and that is on the uh, relative strength uh, uh, section of the 360-degree indicator. Let me just increase the size, um, just hide that and increase the size. Uh, oops, not there we'll go over here increase the size a little bit easier to see all right so you can see this the the, the pound is losing pips to all its trading partners or most of its trading partners at the moment and it's been and as you can see over the uh, in the last three hours six hours 12 hours um uh, and uh, last week and yeah, that's where it ends. So in the last week, the pound is dramatically losing strength in the market. And uh, why that is happening, let's go and see if I can get this one up. And uh, we've got the uh, Forex factory announcement schedule up here. And you can see uh, there is the green mark, which means it's happening right now. And there's a whole lot of uh, very important announcements that have all happened at the same time um, uh, regarding the pound, uh, bank rate announcements, all kinds of other announcements. So all red, important ones. And clearly those announcements haven't uh, favored the pound. Um, and let's just go and have a look at what's actually happening on the pound. And I think the easiest is to go straight to the pound um charts and planned this i had this just happened uh as i was preparing for the webinar i noticed this happening and um i probably need to take this and go down to the five minute chart and you can see the breakout that's that's happened there and uh, the breakout hasn't been that e that easy you can see that it's, it's it went down went up very spiky very spiky a lot of confusion going on and now it's saying okay now i've decided i'm going south and that's a weakening pound that we're looking at that's the only currency that's weakening um uh, the pound's losing uh, quite a lot of strength to the um its trading partners and just looking at some of the signals that we've picked up here uh certainly in line with um, some of the signals that we've spoken about earlier. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, welcome again, everybody. I can see there's a whole lot of names that I recognize. Um, and uh, th thanks for some of the questions that have already come through. Uh, Les, that's a sneaky little one that you snuck in there. Um, but I'll try my best to, to uh, answer those. All right, so let's go and have a look at the, the market as on the whole. And I'm going to start with the uh, knowing that the pound is uh, is, is uh, weakening. Obviously, all pound-related currencies uh, crosses will um, show that. So let's go and have a look at the multiple moving average. It's always a good start there. Um, what we uh, identified yesterday that uh, there was some some um, straddle opportunities. Obviously, there in the uh, uh, Aussie. Uh, there wasn't, in fact, a breakout. Now, if I if I increase the size of this, uh, there there was a breakout out there, and if you look at it, it it uh, only went about forty five pips, but certainly uh, that was a, a tradable breakout. Um, uh, yeah, again, uh, the Aussie yen must probably be a better trade. Um, yeah, yeah, that was 75 pips. And uh, we've got another one here somewhere. Okay, the yen, that uh, broke out of our little uh, straddle and that went uh, also only 50 pips. It depends what kind of trader you are. 
uh, if you were a day trader, 50 pips would be quite a valuable trade. Uh, th this one, uh, the pound yen obviously is now uh, heading south uh, as, as uh, indicated there. So it's not such a bad thing. If you don't know what's going on, just straddle the, um, the, uh, in the, uh, the currency, especially if it's consolidating. It's not an unscientific thing to do. If it's like there, okay, yeah, the, the franc, we've got a strong consolidation. That could be a future straddle right there. Uh, I mean, look how strong that consolidation is. And uh, uh, let's just have a look how we've gone. So, so that's been a, a, mi a mixed bucket, but I think you could have made money, could have made, definitely made money there. That one, you're making money. This one could have made money. We probably uh, would have broken even out, out of that one. Um, this one is definitely, uh, well, it's now the pound. So we know that that one's going to go south. And this one is also, this one I think has, has actually moved a lot. Um, if you look at that breakout point, uh, we can take a breakout point at the back there. Um, uh, th that's over 100 pips. So, so, so that movement is uh, very good. You, those kind of trades, maybe use a trailing stop, break even stops, those kind of things uh, play quite a big role in those kind of breakouts. Um, but certainly uh, now there and the CAD, there's quite, quite a few consolidations going on here. Uh, that uh, we can take advantage of uh, quite nicely. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the channel trading that we did uh, yesterday. In fact, uh, there were a few trades. Um, uh, we were looking at the pound again. Uh, there we were saying uh, one, two, three, it should be going to four, but... Um, if it doesn't and it breaks out of the channel, then that is a good sell. So, so let's see how that one works out. That's basically um, a sell. Uh, does anybody in the the, the um, webinar know about our uh, trend line trading uh, tool? So, in other words, what you could do is you you, you draw a trend line like that, and you tell the EA if if the price goes over that trend line, I want to sell. Well, if the price bounces on that, touches the uh, uh, trend line, I want to buy. So you can go both ways. Uh, you can have trend lines above the price or below the price, that type of thing. But it will it will manually manually trade for you, um, um, it, or not manually automatically. So you don't have to watch the charts for trend line violations, and. Uh, and so on. All right, I'll, I'll just very quickly show you that one. I see there's a few people that haven't seen it before. Uh, sorry about that. I'll, a lot of unplanned things happening here, but uh, let's let's um, expert fire there, and it's called the trend line magic EA. Okay, so let's go and see what it's all about, um, uh, and uh, that's actually meant for for trading channels and trend lines and things like that. So here's the problem. You uh, you want to tr trade a buy, but uh, uh, you have to move your pending order down and down and down and down and, and continuously move it. And then uh, eventually it breaks out and uh, you will have moved your pending order nine times. So to avoid that, we do have a trend line magic EA that says, all right, uh, you can either trade breakouts or you can try tra trade bounces. I hope there's an input section that's given you. So you can trade ba uh, channel bounces from the bottom or ch from the top or breakouts um, and automate that kind of trading. Use this one. And then, oh, yeah, here we go. So you've got your upper trend line. Your you, you literally just draw it in. Um, you've got your upper trend line and your lower trend line. And you tell you can tell it which targets you want, uh, following stops, all a pretty handy tool. Uh, it's a manual trading tool, and uh, there we are. There, there it is. So it's it's pretty uh, handy tool for this kind of trading. Haven't really promoted it much recently, but uh, there it is. Um, and and I, I like the fact that you can add trailing stops and break even stops and all that kind of thing into into that kind of trading. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, so that gives you an idea. It's called the trend line magic. Just go to our website and you'll see it there. All right, so that's that's a bit of that. And that looks like it's going to work quite nicely. That's what we call a false swing or a failed swing. It should have gone to, the swing should have gone to there. It's to change its mind and it's come south. So channel trading is quite handy at catching those kind of ones. Um, uh, here's, another, here's another one that's, oh, it's also the pound. Another one that's happening almost exactly the same. Boom, boom, boom. It should have gone up there. It's coming out and we uh, identified the cell uh, yesterday already on that one. And the same thing with the Aussie yen, but that one's not working too well. The failed swing's not failing, but uh, let's give it a bit more time. And then this one has worked quite well um, in that it, it was a one, two, no, more. One, two, three, four bounce, predictable four bounce. Again, that tool would have helped with that one. You say, I want to bounce bounce into that trade at that point. And then um, you could even exit. You could say, I want to exit on, on this line. But this one seems to be moving quite nicely. And um, I think that's about it. Oops, let's see what's happening here. It almost looks like the same, the, the same one that we've just spoken about. One, two, three, four. No, the, the charts after a while start looking the same. I think it's pretty close to the one that we, uh, yeah, this must probably what we've been looking at. Um, all right. I'm, nothing much more on the, on, on the, uh, uh, that I can see. That that channel is too st steep to be reliable. If, if if the channel line is too steep, uh, I don't actually look at it too too. The, the more horizontal it's, the channel is, the more reliable it is. Let's see why is this a a sell? This should actually be a almost a buy. One, two, no, no, it's just messy. It's not even a channel that. All right, so we'll just leave that one. Okay, sorry about that. I'm just <laughs> trading on my... Uh, uh, and then let's kind of have a look at the uh, RSI... Uh, charts. And uh, yesterday we said there's a bit of a funny head and shoulders type of formation. It's just going nowhere at the moment. It's just going sideways. But uh, the likelihood is, is a downward sell. So I'll, I'll still stick with that. Um, and this one too, uh, yeah, we have a head and shoulders on the RSI uh, and a, a neckline break and uh, it's gone and retested the neckline. So I'll still stick with a sell there. Uh, th this one has, has gone its course. It's, it's, it's had a nice sell from over there. Let's see how, many, how far it went. It didn't go very far, about 60 pips, but it's certainly looking like it's lining up for a buy. Can you see the two mounds and the trend line? The only thing that's missing is it is a, a uh, divergence, uh, but that's certainly lining up for a buy. And this one uh, was in a sell from over there, still going on, and uh, it, took a while, it took a while to get going, but that certainly... That's the pound. So let's just see. Uh, yeah, that's hitting 400 pips. Uh, the franc, as we said, is seen before, it's, it's just trading sideways at the moment, and the CAD's trading sideways. Let's have a look at now. So there'll be a few more pounds on this side. Um, uh, again, that that trade has taken a long time to to get going. <laughs> I mean, it's only it's only about 50 pips up. Is that 50 pips? No, 27. Now I thought it wasn't that much. And uh, this one also, uh, this one's going because it's the pound. It's already 120 pips up. And uh, this, <laughs> uh, the pound New Zealand, they say, yeah, there's a lot of them on this side. Uh, the pound of Zealand is looking really good, 120 pips up at the moment. Um, on New Zealand, uh, that's just messy. It's, it's, it's a very messy 
uh, currency at the moment. But it is the, because the pound is is uh, weakening, that's shooting up. But uh, that's not a valid signal because the RSI hasn't reached the bottom of the oversold area. So it's not really a valid area signal. Um, okay, so that's it. Okay, so that's about a, a quick review of the market today. The pound is obviously... Um, uh, looks like it's uh, and 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 quite honestly, this could be the start of a, quite a big trend. The pound is is uh, one of those currencies that once it starts trending, it 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 it, um, it sticks to its guns. So it it will it will probably the, what we're looking at here are of the starts the start of uh, a, a pound a weak pound trend. Um. Okay, so, so so that really covers the analysis side. Any questions, comments on anything that anybody's seen in the market? Um, I think this the pound news is obviously uh, the, the, the taking over a lot of the trading. And luckily, as you can see, the RSI has pointed us in the right direction in many of the cases. All right, so no questions on that. All right, so let's have a quick look at the dream machine and um i'll just bring this across the, my browser so uh we've just looked at the trend line magic ea uh it's 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 really an essential tool for a manual trader even uh to um automate their trading using um, uh trend lines um okay Okay, so let's have a look. We said we we're going to look at the um, Dream Machine. So I've got a whole lot of live accounts going. Um, I must explain these live accounts. Uh, they they monitoring accounts. Uh, where's the Dream? There's Mr. Dream Machine. Um, they are monitoring accounts using exactly the settings that we expect our clients to use. So in other words, if it's the plug and play versions, we are using exactly the plug and play version. If it's the uh, normal version, all we're doing is we're taking the top four best currencies of uh, the EA factory websites uh, optimization schedule and we're just taking those blindly putting them in the EA and we're trading them so that's what we're doing and what is quite amazing is the results that we're getting now you know they're not fantastic results but it's amazing that they're positive let's put it that way because Optimized results are not always the the, the best, but um, we are being proven wrong at the moment. So, um, and and before I go into the dream machine, let me just show you that. I don't know if I can. Um, portfolio of all monitoring accounts. Um, so I've got all. Uh, we've got about fifty-eight monitoring accounts because that's if you take all the plug-and-play versions, all the top four versions of most of the EAs, uh, that's uh, how many uh, uh, accounts, in fact, you end up trading. And here they are. And I, I, I like you typing portfolio behind my FX Blue uh, link. And that, uh, when you type portfolio, you actually see when last it was updated. So this is a way that we monitor our accounts to see that the EAs are trading. So I know that these EAs are trading because they're being updated uh, on a on a regular basis, and uh, you can see there are all the uh, various the Dream Machine, the GTM, the Make Money, the the RSI divergence. There's a, a whole lot of uh, ones here. The um, RSI envelope, time of day, tradable magnet. So we we're trading most of our major. Uh, uh, EAs uh, on live accounts. These are all live accounts. Um, and if we look at the statement uh, and look at that, it's so it's a hundred bucks up. Uh, the the close profit is a two six, and the uh, floating profit is two five. So we uh, our our fifty eight accounts are hundred bucks up after. Uh, well, it's not 29 days. It's actually about 15 days. We started in the beginning of uh, June. 
so it's a short time. It's, it doesn't say much, but uh, it's, it's just interesting that the total portfolio, and, and if you click on that, you can actually then sort the portfolios out in terms of profitability, and you can see which ones are doing exceptionally well and which ones are doing very poorly. And you look at the bottom here for the poor ones, and we can also then see which uh, currencies are doing badly, um, which uh, settings are doing badly, and we can work on, we work on the weak ones and, and try and improve them or replace them. So that's the, the, the idea of, of portfolio trading. And that's basically, and what we're doing is nothing special at all. It's we're using straightforward settings that all traders have got access to. So, um, okay, so uh, let's march back to the Dream Machine. Okay, so there's the Dream Machine. Um, uh, we are trading, uh, there's, uh, there's basically, and, and this is the plug and play version. So we've got no choice here. Plug and play version says you can trade the four hour or the one hour, and you can use aggressive, balanced, or conservative uh, settings. So we've we've actually done all of them in one go. And you can see here that the conservative one hour settings are not doing well, but the rest are all nicely positive. Um, I'm, I'm get, uh, I can just give you a quick rundown on the dream machine. Uh, Forex dream machine. Right, so how the dream machine works, just a very, very quick, uh, let's say these are all RSI readings and, uh, and uh, what happens is uh, we look for the RSI readings that have the biggest gap. So let's say this is the pound going up there and that's the yen going down there. When it reaches a, a very big gap size, we actually trade against the trend. So we say, okay, it's going, uh, the, the pound is strengthening, the, the yen is weakening, uh, we are going to um, buy the weak and sell the, the strong. Because why? Because it's unsustainable. They always topple over and come back into the middle. They topple over and come back. If you look at any of these peaks, they just topple over and come back, topple over and come back. So the, that's the theory. So that's how the dream machine works. It basically just uh, uh, sells the strong currency and, and buys the weak currency. So you've got two chances. It's not like you, you tr you're backing one currency. You're actually, you're actually saying um, that the uh, weak currency will strengthen, the, the strong currency will weaken. So you've got two chances of success. And if, they, if that both happens, then you have a really good deal that you've had. You only need one of them actually to close the gap because the, the difference between the gap, you see there's the gap. And let's say the pound stayed up there, but the yen moved. So it would close the gap. So you've got two chances of success when trading the um, dream machine. Uh, th that's basically how that one works. It's automated. It looks at 28 of the currencies, trades them all at the same time, and looks for the strongest and the weakest ones. And as you can see, there, that's basically what's happened. And then they consolidate and so on and so on. So I don't know if you have any questions. There. It's still early days. I thought I'd just show you how it's going. It's going quite well. Um, uh, if you look at uh, the closed orders, um, there's been 82 closed orders. So this this uh, hasn't been a quiet trading uh, EA. It's already had a few. It's got a lot of open orders. There we are, and um, uh, they mainly positive. So and and, and it, it, it trades. Um, and to give you an idea, let's just take that one there. Two machine aggressive. And um, hopefully that will show us what it should look like. Okay, there you are. That's what I wanted to find. Now you can see it's just trading random uh, currencies because whatever's weak and whatever's strong, it will trade against each other. Uh, it's had a, a, a success rate. This particular account has had a success rate of 90%. And um, it's a real account. So the the, uh, the one weakness about the Dream Machine, unfortunately, 
is the fact because it's trading 28 currencies at the time, we can't back trade it. Now, we can back trade it on MT5. Very, very difficult. It takes a long, long time. Very difficult to back trade uh, it on MT5. But that's the biggest downfall. We cannot optimize the setting. We literally are trading this EA on a continuous improvement basis, uh, uh, trading it forward. Uh, optimization information is very scarce and very difficult to get. Uh, a question has come, can you trade the Dream Machine on the daily time frame? Yes, uh, you can trade it basically on any time frame. Um, if you're trading on, on short time frames like the 30 minute or the 50 minute or the hourly, then you must use small stops and small targets. If you're using daily, obviously big, big stops and big targets, you can trade it on any particular uh, time frame. Uh, thanks for that question, Barry. Uh, but then adapt your um, trading ranges accordingly. Um, Okay, let's have a look. Um, uh, uh, Les, you've asked a, a, a few questions about one cent accounts. Um, I can't really show you any any details of that. Um, I I have answered as much as I can over the. Um, through emails, I'll just see if I can find something that might explain it a little bit better. I, I might not be able to do this. I'm sorry. Um, one cent accounts. All right, let me just. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, hopefully, you, see, you can see this. Right, so, so, I don't know if I've done the right slide, yeah? So what happens with a one cent account is the brokers have created these one cent accounts that make a cent look like a dollar. <laughs> it's, it's the best way I can explain it. So if you have a hundred cents, which is one dollar, it would look like it would look like a hundred dollars. So for every cent you have available in your account, it becomes tradable as one dollar. Now, that's basic. I can't say much more about these ones. So if you had a hundred dollars in your one cent account, it it means it's a thousand cents and it would become tradable as a thousand dollar account. So the broker merely pretends that your cents are dollars and it's amazing. There's a lot of these accounts out there, but the biggest advantage to them is that like for instance, on the uh, GTM, we say that you should trade point oh one lots for every thousand dollars in your account. Now, because you have these thousand dollar accounts that are actually ten dollar accounts, but they thousand dollars, the EA doesn't know that. The EA trades this account as if it's a thousand dollar account. It doesn't trade it like a ten, it trades it like a thousand dollars. So therefore, you can lot size appropriate to your risk. You can also create the most amazing portfolios of you know for a thousand dollar you can create a hundred thousand dollar portfolios so that's what these one cent accounts has been able so so it's just pretend the broker pretends that your cents are dollars but the ea doesn't know it and that's the most important thing the ea trades oh i've got a thousand dollars to trade i can trade it and the margins are the same as if they, you know, everything's the same. Everything's the same, but it's a cent account. Uh, let's have a look if I can. Means that when you, EA requires a minimum, oh, that's what I just said. The EA will think that you're using that. Okay, that's what I said. 
Uh, and what it means is instead of trading one current, uh, one EA with one setting and one currency and putting all your eggs in one basket, you can now trade a range of currencies. And as you've seen, we've trading a wide range of, of um, settings. We, we're trading 58. I've just, you've just seen a portfolio of 58. Trade. Now what you can say is you can drop the bad ones. You can say, oh, no, this is bad. What I'm going to do with my bad ones, am I going to substitute them with better currencies or the winning currency? So you can continuously improve your portfolio if you have that kind of approach. Also, the, uh, the, the portfolios have trending EAs and sideways EAs, so you, you never have to worry about, oh, the pound is, is running mad at the moment. I'm not worried about that because the portfolio will take care of itself. Um, and you can start applying proper risk control. That's one of the biggest problems of, uh, of reasons for failure. So a one cent account is not the same as a micro account. A lot of people think that's this case. It's not at all. And they also, it's got nothing to do with leverage. Uh, these one cent accounts, in fact, some have a thousand to one leverage. So they even have improved leverage for you to make use of. So they, uh, I would certainly encourage you to do that, certainly if you're trading EAs. Um, and InstaForex, for instance, if you go there, uh, they say what type of accounts. If you click on, uh, they'll explain how a uh, a cent account works. There, you, you can actually go and read, go to the, and you can go and visit some broker sites, and they'll explain to you how one cent accounts work. But I would certainly, if you are going to trade as a, a an EA a trader, I, I would suggest that you think of building a comprehensive portfolio like I uh, like we like shown earlier comprehensive that we can balance your risk and do all kinds of things and I must say it's the most relaxing way to trade ever it, it really is okay so let's have a bottom line is that each pair needs did it the G really loses be a little of the balance okay all right. Uh, any questions, comments, or remarks from anything that has been? It's been quite a busy uh, webinar. We've uh, spoken about uh, announcements. Uh, we've experienced an announcement that's just happened. Uh, we covered the uh, market. Uh, we've spoken about the Dream Machine. We've even looked at the total um, results of our total portfolio trading, exactly the, the settings that our traders should be use or could be using i shouldn't say should be but should be could be using so it's been quite a busy webinar let's have a look is there any questions comments or remarks other if, if i don't uh, yeah i think that's it all right um then uh, from me alex deploy thank you very much for attending i think there's been a, a good crowd in the room uh, thanks for all the interaction thanks barry les and uh, a few others uh, and um, thanks thanks for sending that through and have a uh, well my weekend almost starts now but uh, friday still a trading day so we'll be looking out there but uh, the next webinar will be on monday Cheerio. Bye.